So the name of the message this morning is The Beast is Coming. Now there's a song about the Lord is coming and he's coming back for me. I believe that the beast is coming for some of his people. I believe he's coming for those that are in churches. Yeah, I think we're going to find the biggest followers that the beast has are people that were churched. Been in churches their whole life. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7 the Bible says, For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And we found out a while back that word let and letteth means hinder and hinders. So he who now hinders until he's taken out of the way. There are some people in the churches that are hindering the devil from doing exactly what he wants to do. But not everybody. Not everybody in the churches are doing what God thinks they should be doing. He says, but when he is taken out of the way, verse 7, then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all the deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they might all be dead who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. With the people of the world increasingly bowing to statues, worshiping bones, going to the graveyard thinking they're talking to somebody, praying to anything and everything, getting tattoos all over their bodies, receiving marks on their forehead by priests and such, and they have this infatuation with the occult and witchcraft. Harry Potter movies has been really popularized here lately. And, excuse me, I've got the sniffles this morning. The devil is trying to hinder my works here. I don't think he's not trying to hinder your works as well. Well, the stage has been clearly set for the Antichrist, or the beast, whichever you want to call him, to appear. And so there's a lot of people that say because we see all these signs that the Antichrist is going to appear, there's going to be a rapture. And so all the saints of God are going to be taken up and all the only ones that are going to be left are going to be the ones that ain't saved. Now, I tell you what, you can go along with that theory, but then if you're one of the ones left and you've been in the church, what's going to happen when you don't go up when you thought you should have went up? Then you're going to be questioning God, aren't you? You're going to be saying, well, I don't know what God expects from me. I gave it my best shot and I'm still not going up in the rapture. Then there must not be a God and I must be left. And, and there must be this. He's going to, the devil's going to wreak havoc in your head because somebody told you there was a rapture that you should go up in and you didn't get to go up in it. And we see uh, everybody buying these uh, GPS systems today. We have our cars. <laughs> no matter what you do, we're being spied on by somebody today. That if you got a, as a matter of fact, all the televisions that are made today got a camera on the inside and they can be watching you while you're watching TV. Yeah, and they can even do it when the TV's off because you got it plugged into the wall. A lot of people say flat tape or duct tape. Unless you unless you unplug it from the wall. They can, you know, that little bit of standby power is power that camera that's watching you. And then we look at everywhere we go, like Sissersville, they got a camera up there on the light. You know, everything you do today, they got cameras on everything, you know. And, and now they want to put, start putting barcodes on babies before they're even born. Yeah, think about that. We're moving into a 
cashless society where everybody's using credit cards like us and we're using credit cards we don't I haven't carried any cash in my pocket for years now and uh, we're moving into a society without any cash whatsoever and then now look at what's happening with these people around here shooting and, and killing people left and right because of the mismanagement of the, of the gun control uh, bill that they have in our government. They're not managing correctly or people wouldn't be running around here with guns just killing everybody at, at the slightest whim that they have. So what's going to happen, you know, they're going to repeal the Second Amendment. They're going to take that Second Amendment away and then only the government and gangsters are going to have the guns. <laughs> they're going to come to your house and they will take your deer hunting rifle off of you and you're not going to have anything. So when a big bear comes out of the woods to eat you, you're going to have to hit him with your butcher knife or your paring knife or something because he's going to tear the door down and want to come in there and get a hold of you and eat you because there's nothing that you're going to be had that's going to stop him. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm very good to me. I've got a class door. And then we have all these uh, prisons today that uh, they, they, they are putting people into and building more and more prisons. And so we see where all this is, is leading us. The, uh, the, the prisons are over flooded today and overcrowded and over everything. And uh, we got over, uh, over a million people in prison in the United States at any given time. You know? And so they're going to have to do something in order to control the mass of the people. Why? Because they, they've led the people away from God. And so now every imagination of the people's hearts is to do evil because they have nobody to answer to. Our school teachers have taught our children that we evolved from some slug that crawled up out of the ocean or some rock or something. Then you don't have to answer to anybody. Do whatever you want to do. If it feels good, then do it. If it looks good, eat it. I know what Andrew says. Yeah. If it looks good, eat it. So if everything looks good, you eat it. Well, everything doesn't look good to me that he needs, I'll guarantee you that. <laughs> and there's a lot of people being suckered into this, that kind of thing. Revelation chapter 13, he says in verse 13, listen to what the Bible has to say of a time that's fixing to come in the not too distant future. He says, He doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire to come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Revelation 13, 13. Isn't that so? And verse 14 says, And deceive them that dwell on the earth. And look at there, he says, not, not everybody, but those that dwell on the earth. What are they? They are earth people. You see, uh, what are you dwelling on now? It was your car, your house, your money. What's your mind on right now? People's minds are on something. Whatever your mind is on, and it's not on God, it's on the world. They are earth dwellers in. And so he says, he deceives them that dwell upon the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Say to them that dwell on the earth. There again, I, if all you can think about is these earthly things, oh, let me go down here to McDonald's, let me go to Burger King, let me, get, let, let me go get something to eat, let me go buy me a new car, let me buy a new house, let me buy a new this, that, and, that all that... All the world has dwelling. They're thinking about the things that's up on the earth. These are earth dwellers. Okay, we need to understand that. If you're not dwelling upon the way of God, you're, dwell, you're an earth dweller. And if you're an earth dweller, he says, saying to them, uh, verse 14, that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and they lived. He had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And verse 16, he causes all, all earth dwellers. If your mind is on the earth and is not on God, then guess what? You're an earth dweller. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bold, to receive a mark in their forehead or in their right hand. That no man might buy or sell, say he that had the mark, or the name of the beast. I'm not taking three sixes. Well, don't then. 
That don't mean you're not taking the mark, because it says that no man might buy himself say he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Now, you're not taking three sixes, you're not taking what? The last part of it? The number of his name? Well, what about to uh, receive the mark in the right hand who has uh, the name of the beast? Or, or the mark of the beast? Think about it. What is the mark or the name or the number? You're not so concerned with three sixes, you've left the other ones out. And now, how do you know? Well, you're not, your mind is dwelling on the Lord. Your mind is dwelling on the earth. The things that are for the earth. Oh, I've got to have this and I've got to have that. I need, I need, I need, I need. That's all your mind can think about. That is where your mind is dwelling. It's not dwelling on heavenly things. He said, here is wisdom. Yeah, is there any wisdom in the world today? I think not. Because the world is really... Out here shooting and killing people on their way to Walmart? What are they doing at Walmart? They're dwelling up on the earth. All they can think about what's up on the earth. They can't think about what God has for us. It's all about what I can do for myself. He causes all, both rich and poor, bond and free, to receive a mark. Think about it. Right now, we have a time that the Catholics celebrate every year. They call it the time of the lift. Isn't that what you ever heard of it? The lift? Well, they take a piece of charcoal and they put it on their forehead. How do they know that's not the mark of the beast? Who says that's the mark of God? I don't see nowhere in the Bible that says that we're supposed to put a piece of charcoal on our forehead. Look at some of these uh, countries over there, uh, like that worship Buddha and stuff. And they, they run around with this mark on their foreheads all the time. What is that all about? Are they really worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ or are they worshiping something else? You know, and it's no coincidence, I guess you could say, that there are over a billion Catholics across our world who when they go through this period of Lent, they put that mark on their forehead. Well, if their priest directs them to put a different mark on their forehead, are they going to do that too? Think about it. Why are they doing what they're doing? Does the Bible say to do that? I can't find out where in the Bible it says. And where does the Bible say it says? Let, L-E-N-T, or whatever it is, you know? They've been conditioned to receive this by who? By their religion? Or their priest? Or... Was it being conditioned by the beast? And now some people say that it'll probably be a, some sort of an electronic device, uh, maybe a, 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 a chip implanted in under your skin. One one organization showed it, it was a chip implanted down next to your brain that made you do whatever they wanted you to do. Another person talked about it being a tattoo on their body. <laughs> and so we have the technology for it to be a, a microchip and we don't have to wait another hundred years it's here and it's here now they put it in dogs and you, you go to a vet there are people that work for some of these corporations I read about a person that worked I think it was Microsoft I'm not sure but they had a chip put in their head so that, that they didn't have to carry their credit card or whatever. They could just walk up and put their hand up next to the door and it would open. They would gain access. They oper operated their computer with that chip and they didn't have to use a password. As long as they was right there, it, they could get into anything that they wanted that belonged to them. So you think about it. If, if, if it's happening by the people, for the people, and of the people, huh? Yeah, we've got a certain amounts of freedom, but are we free? You know, tattoos are m more uh, prominent today, I think, than they've ever been. Well, when it becomes a fad for someone to take the mark, how many people's going to take it? Because it's a fad. You know, when I was a little boy, they had these pants they called beach combers. And they looked like regular long pants, but they were tacked off. And so it was halfway up your legs. But boy, it was a thing for everybody to wear these beach cover things. 
back then, and hats and just a passing thing, and then they like to run around with droopy drawers on, the pants falling off the back end of them, you know. Well, they, they even got a pair of blue jeans down that you buy that you can't pull up around your waist. They only know your hips. You know, it's a passing fad that people go on. And so what's going to be the next passing fad? Taking a mark? Oh, yeah, everybody's got the mark. Don't you want to get it too? You don't, don't you want to be like everybody else? Well, and then you're going to go take a mark too. And now how do you know what it is? Oh, it's a cross. Yeah, it's a cross. Yeah. I knew a man in prison had a cross right on his forehead. Yeah, he had a cross tattooed right on his forehead. <laughs> I wonder when he stands in front of God what the Lord is going to say about that. Because that, that, that thing is a cursed thing. You know, that cross is cursed. And it, it was the instrument of the Lord's death. What would it be like to go into a mother's house and her son had been put in an electric chair and electrocuted and you have a picture of an electric chair tattooed on your forehead when you walk into that mama's house. I wonder how she's going to feel about it. So you think about how the Lord's going to feel about it. Well, if God wants to work on you, He'll put it on you. You know, you don't have to do it. God knows what He's doing. We don't have to go out there and do God's job for Him. He knows what He's doing. And then we see that, um, I read somewhere that uh, they got uh, 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 that chip that they can put in you, even in a tattoo now. I, I read a while back where they put in a tattoo uh, where they could imprint uh, like a, a barcode and it has it has your blood type, where your age was, when you were born, where you was at, everything in, included in that barcode and it's hidden inside of a tattoo on your body so you won't even know that it's there. But if you need to access any of it, you put it under a certain kind of a machine and it can read the barcode. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10, they said, uh, I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said to me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and thy brethren, and have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now, I believe this Catholic Church with all this uh, worshiping of the priests and stuff is more demonic and I believe it's a symbol of the coming of the Antichrist because here they got people reverencing these, uh, these priests like they're God. And they're bowing down to them, they're worshiping them and, and, and statues and all these other kind of craziness. <laughs> I mean, what in the world is wrong with people? Don't they know what the Bible has to say? <laughs> Obviously not. In John chapter 12 and verse 33, the Bible says, For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. And, he, and then Jesus goes on to say, He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. And you do therefore greatly err. So you see, people are doing things and they're doing it wrongly. You know, you can come to church and be going to church in the wrong kind of way. You think, oh, I'm doing this for the Lord, and I'm doing that, and you ain't doing it for nobody but yourself. You're doing it wrong. You're erring in your belief. You're doing it the wrong way. If it's not the way God said to do it, then you're doing it the wrong way, then aren't you? In Mark chapter 12, verse 27, again Jesus says, He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. You do therefore greatly err. Again, Jesus says, you're making a big mistake how you think you're going to worship God. And it's not about the way you might think, see. You're being told something that is not true. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, verse 5, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me. See, God has laid it out in the Ten Commandments. He, you don't put him have these statues in God's house. And we got this Catholic Church, that's all they got in there are statues. Every which way you look, they got statues. And no wonder all these people gathered around watching what their statues have 
blood coming out of its eyes. These are hellish abominations is what we're seeing. This ain't God. God sent His only Son, Jesus Christ, down here to die on the cross for you. And you have to recognize you're a sinner. And you have to accept what Jesus has done for you. Not what some Catholic church or some statue or, or Mary or some other person has done. They, they have gone so far as to say that Mary was, was immaculately taken up into heaven. You know, and, and like she was a sinless woman. Nowhere does the Bible say that. But they say it. This is not the Word of God. The Word of God is pure. It's concise. It's right to the point. And it's sharper than a sword with two sides on it. In 2 Thessalonians, again, chapter 2 and verse 7, Remember the mystery of iniquity is already working. Only he who now is letting it, withholding it, is going to withhold it until he's taken out of the way. How is he taken out of the way? Well, they want to say he's been taken up in the rapture. Really? Has all of our church been taken up in the rapture, or where have they gone? Think about it. All the people that used to come to this church, have they been gone up in the rapture, or where are they? They've just been taken out of the way, haven't they? They haven't gone to heaven. Matter of fact, a good part of them probably in hell burning right now. If, uh, if the truth be known, because the way they lived their lives. They talked about living for the Lord, but they didn't live for the Lord. They only talked about it. You know, you can talk and talk, but then when that talk's going to get you to heaven, you know, the love of the truth, <coughs> or the pursuit, the desire, the only thing that we can look at is doing what the Word of God has to say. You get outside the Word of God into your thinking, I call that stinking thinking. Your stinking thinking. Oh, I think it'll be alright if I do this. I think it'll be alright if I do that. Is that what God's Word says? Are you going to second guess God now? Because you know more than God? Some people know all about the truth, but they don't do it. They know what they're supposed to do, but they don't do it. What well, is that a help for them? I don't see it. Because if they don't want to quit doing what they're doing and do what God says, I don't see no help for them. How can there be? Because most of these people have a better view of life. Oh, I can do this and I can do that. Oh, I can do this. And they don't want to hear the truth. They want to hear the lie. Oh, it'll be all right anyway. It'll be okay. My mom, I know my mom was in heaven. I know my granddaddy's in heaven. I know, even though they great, great, smoked like a freight train, uh, did all these simple things and never went to church. But oh yeah, they made it to heaven. Uh, yep, I, I want to go be with them in heaven. You might go be with them, but they won't be in heaven. You better take another look at the way they live and the way you're supposed to live as a godly child uh, of God <laughs> instead of some hypocrite going to church saying I'm a Christian and acting a part that there's something that he isn't. Hundreds of millions of these Catholics I can, I can honestly tell you, they, can't, they, they will never be saved. Because they're depending on their priest to save them. They're not depending on the Lord Jesus Christ. They're depending on what their priest has to say. Otherwise, they wouldn't be put that mark on their forehead then, would they? Because their priest tells them. Where does the Bible tell them to do that? Look at the people who have refused the truth. Yeah, they listen to some doctor. They don't listen to what God said. They listen to some doctor. Oh, the doctor said, if I do this, I'll be all right. If I do that, I'll be all right. I, I prayed and God didn't do nothing, so I'm going to do what the doctor says. Why? Simple. They don't love the truth. You know, they have no desire to learn the truth nor hear the truth. Because the truth said, oh, i got to do this over here. I don't want to do that. I want to do this over here. Well, you can, and you can go to hell for it, too. Because the love of the truth is still evident. Some people are content with their false doctrines, trusting in their own works. Oh, I'll be all right. I'll be saved no matter what. I didn't, I, I'm sure that God knows my whatever, and I know I'll be on my way to heaven anyway. I don't care what that pastor has to say. 
Their faith is in men and not in God. And the Bible warned them. Mark chapter 7 and verse 7, Jesus himself says, How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines and commandments of men. How do they, how do, they do that? Let's we'll take one look at it. They don't do what God says, they do what man says. Where did God say put up a Christmas tree in the church? Where did God say send out in color eggs all over the place and get chocolate rabbits because Jesus rose from the dead? Where did the Bible say there's a Santa Claus? What does the Bible say that there's a tooth fairy? Come on, teaching for doctrine to command us of men. They're not doing what God says, they're doing what man has to say. They support everything that man has to come up with, but they don't do nothing for God. Don't be fooled. I think that Catholicism is a surefire way to hell. You want to know that God's honest truth and they ain't the Catholics ain't alone. Just about all these Protestant religions are nothing but shoot off in the Catholic Church. They stand up there. We went to our church one night and they had five, they took up offerings five times. And the pastor stood up and said, if we don't get enough this time, we're going to take up another one. And we're going to stay here all night taking up offerings till we get enough for these people that they can have money to travel in their bus. Well, what kind of a deal is that? The people first are hard they don't want to give nothing to the church. How they don't matter if they take up an offering 50 times, they still ain't going to give it. No matter what they do. And if you think it's a coincidence that the Catholic Church just recently decided to commit permit homosexual priests, <laughs> think of it. Now they come, it's okay that you're a homosexual priest, we don't mind. <laughs> and look at all the problems they've already had with their they're Catholic priests and, and, and messing with all these little boys and stuff out there. You know? I tell you, I'm not saying that that's a sin that there is no forgiveness of. Because anybody can be forgiven of anything. But you know what? We've got to start listening to what God has to say. The world's religions are slowly, or maybe, gradually, I don't know, but they're kind of leaning towards. Well, I seen uh, Billy Graham had a big talk up a while back about the Catholic Church and how good they was, and this, that, and the other. And then we see some of these other television evangelists over there, and, and they're getting their churches in entwined within the Catholic religion again. Bill Gaither. And he has this lesbian gospel singer up there, Marcia Stevens. You know, they got a new religion out today. Homosexuality is a, you know, it's okay. That's what they're saying. But it's what God says. Does God say it's apostasy? Does God say it's idolatry? What does God say about homosexuality? It's a sin. That's what God says. And your sin will not get you into heaven. Because if your sin is found in you, when God casts your sin into hell, and it's in you, guess where you're going to be? And this is a new universal religion out there. It's okay. they got... Lots of churches out there with homosexual pastors now. And then I found out on the internet here a while back, 18% of the congregation of this Unitarian Universalist church claim to be atheists. <laughs> what they even go to church for? If they're being atheists. Who are they worshiping? And if they ain't no God, as far as they're concerned, what are they going to church for? 18% of them say there is no God. Dios, who professes to be a devout Christian, saying God approves of her public stripping and her lewd clothing. God says it's okay for Dios to dress like she dresses, huh? Well, I guess uh, 
God's going to have to rein, reinvent uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 uh, where it talks about modesty and how women should dress uh, not with growing hair and costly apparel and looking like the world but uh, having the hidden man of her. I don't see how she's doing all that. So yeah, I believe that the Antichrist is alive and well today. You know? And I believe that they're going to try to lead you into a new world order. Because it's, it's going to have to be different than the way it's been. It's not going to be like your mother and your dad's religion. You know, even though your mother and your dad's religion didn't get them into heaven, <laughs> because they wasn't worshiping God, they were still doing the wrong thing. Most of them were already burning in hell if you want to know what God saw the truth about it, because they had to have it their way with their Santa Clauses and their Easter bunnies and all their adultery and everything else that they were doing, and yet they're going to tell you, oh yeah, you need to go to church and you need to do this, and they live like hell themselves. You know, and then Alex Jones, they got hit, they got that man fixed where he can't hardly open his mouth now. And who did it? This totalitarian uh, political state that we're getting into, you can't get, we don't have freedom of speech no more. You open your mouth like that woman down there in, in Kentucky. She wasn't going to marry uh, homosexuals. She wasn't going to grant them the license to get married. They're suing her about it. Probably lose everything she has over her. <laughs> but guess what? She'll have favor with God. But where will the homosexual be when they have to appear in front of him? And God says to them, What did you do to my servant that I placed down there at that courthouse? What are they going to say to God? Oh, God has no right to be him. God said, Yeah, you have a right. You have a right to go to hell if that's what you want. Now get there. Because he said he would leave an example of them suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Read the book of Jude. Suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. If you want to do that, fine. You better realize what you're, you're, you're looking at when you do that sort of thing. The world is crazy. <coughs> we have our Toilets that flush here at the church, and we had to convert them so they didn't use so much, uh, so much water during the flushing. Well, a few years back, they were telling people to put rocks in the toilet, so they wouldn't. It, the rocks would take up place of the water. They only use a small amount of the water to flush it. Well, look at the drinking water we have. Half the time, the water here is contaminated. You can't drink it. They got a boil the thing now half the time. And, and you're paying over a hundred dollars a month for water that you have to boil before you can drink it. Well, I might as well go down to the sewer and get me a, a glass of water and boil it. I'm going to be just as well off as some of the drinking water that you're going to get in, in these cities here in West Virginia. And people looking at saving forests and animals and all this other stuff, but what about our babies? What about our children? Like I said, on my way to church this morning, I seen a mother out there. She got a sign out on the street. And then on that sign on the street, you know, slow down. We have children here playing. She really cares if somebody don't come by there too fast. At the speed limit, it's 25 miles an hour. You know? And sometimes it looks like they're doing 80. I can see that. Yeah, they come through your home. <laughs> And riding four wheelers and every other thing you can think of, riding up and down our street. Yes, she got a sign out there, but where was she at this morning while we was headed for church? She sat out there in her driveway on a little stool, and the kids was all out there playing. Well, she don't want them to get run over, but she don't care nothing about them going to hell. Come on now. Well, maybe she's a Catholic. She only has to go to church once a month, like some people that we know here in Pine Grove, in New Martinsville. They go to church whenever. They, and yet they think they're going to heaven. Oh, I go to church. Uh, well, I don't go every week, but I go, I go, I go enough. Yeah, I, I go enough. Yeah, I, I know God's going to be all right with me the way I go. You know, you think he is? Well, fine, that's you. But when you stand in front of him and he says, I don't even know you, what are you going to say then? Oh, well, let me go back and redo this again. Let me go back and do that. Well, my dad, he's a pastor, right? Oh, oh no, she's a... Whatever, my great grandmother, she's this, but, but where are you at? But what is that, what is that to do with you? What have you 
that. You know? Well, G. Wright is doing the same road they're on. And what kind of effort is being made right now today to stop abortions? Trump has got some kind of laws he's trying to stop abortions with, and he's been met with controversy every which way you can... They want to go on to continue killing their own babies. What kind of people would do that? They care more about the forest and the animals out there than they do about their own children. What kind of hard-hearted people are we living around? No wonder they all go to hell. Yeah. And they put them in the garbage dumps, microwave, ovens, yeah. and, um, and uh, things you put, uh, searching in, they found two things in this. Our society is so pagan, but in the same token, they think they're worshiping God. And yet, look so how paganism has entered into the world. They run around celebrating Christmas right in the churches. Of Santa Claus in the churches. What kind of craziness is this? Where is God at in, in Santa Claus and Easter Bunny? Where is God at in that? Why is that in the churches? If you want to do that, just like next thing you know, they're going to have a bar in the church. Or a strip tease joint in the church. Or whatever. They, you know, if you're going to have that, why are you going to have it in God's house? It's bad enough that you're going to do it out there. Why are you doing it in the God's house and further dis destroy God's house? You know? And we talk about God bless America. They get out there in front of a football game and they say, God bless America. And, and then somebody got mad because some of the people got on their knees to the flag and bowed down to it and just that the other. Why did they get mad about them saying, singing God bless America when well, they slaughtered all these babies out here? How is God going to bless a nation that does such craziness? Spend millions upon millions of dollars over some dumb little football, and yet in the same token they send all their babies into a trash can. Come on, what kind of craziness are we looking at? Well, the woman that was trying to get on the airplane with the duffel bag with the six day old baby zipped up in them. Yeah. And they were going to, uh, some, some of the school, they, they, they bragged about uh, putting prayer in them and, and doing the American flag and stuff. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America while millions of the Americans are flocking to Sin City. And what are they doing in Sin City, Las Vegas, Atlanta, Georgia, fornicating, gambling, and all kinds of real wickedness. And what are they doing at home? The same thing. We were sitting alongside the highway, waiting on a, a, a man while her husband was on the other side of the highway headed towards work. And what is she doing on this side of the highway, waiting on another man getting off of work? How much more of this wickedness do you think God is going to tolerate in America? They are worshiping the creature more than the creator. They're not worshiping God, they're worshiping the creature. And in the end, so though mankind is being conditioned, I say conditioned, okay, to worship the Antichrist. That's what it's all about. The mystery of iniquity. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7 again. The mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he's taken it. Satan is taking the people out of the way. God hasn't taken them up in the rapture. The devil is taking them out of the way. The devil is saying it is okay for you to go ahead and sin. It's okay for you to have two men getting married. It's okay for women to, two women to get married. It's okay to kill your babies. It's okay to go out and do all manner of sin and evilness. It's okay. And then, verse 8, shall that wicked be revealed. You see, it's going to be a minute yet. It's going to be going on for a little few more minutes yet. But that wicked is going to be revealed. And the Lord himself is going to destroy this wickedness. Apostasy in the churches. <clears throat> Christianity Today magazine said in one of their articles, 
some same-sex activity or experimentation does not automatically mean that you are gay. It's okay. You can do this, you can do that. A Baptist church in Tennessee, according to the internet now, recently ordained a lesbian to be their pastor. <laughs> yeah. Think about it. And then the, you get on on the internet and you search the internet and you'll see hundreds of gay websites. And they're appeared by professing Christians. And they are professing Christians who are homosexuals. And they are there to defend their homosexuality. In other words, God, you're going to have to accept us just like we are. With our sin. With our filthiness, you're going to have to accept us because this is all you've got. This is us. This is all we have. We have each other. And God, you're an imposter. So you need to get out of our schools. You need to get out of our government. You need to get out of our way because we're going to have it our way and not your way. This is what the Christian world is coming to. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3. Let no man deceive you. Listen to me now. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. This is what's happening. There's a falling away. Yeah, he who now left, he who now hinders, will hinder until he's taken out of the way. God's not taking them up in a rapture to get them out of here before a great tribulation. The devil's taking them out of the way, so they're no longer a threat to the devil. They're a friend of the devil. Are you ready to meet Jesus today? In Romans chapter 10, verse 3, the Bible says, For they, Romans 10, verse 3, 3 For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, are going about to establish their own righteousness, and have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. You know, we come to church sometimes tired. And sometimes people sit in the church and they think about other things. Some people go through the worship service in the day, half asleep, not paying attention. They sing the songs that we sing in the churches and not paying attention or taking the words to their heart. And a lot of people in the churches closing their eyes and they're not praying. You know, if we look at some of the reminders in the scriptures how the Lord wants us to worship, it says we need to bring glory to His name. When we bring glory to the name of the Lord, we're bringing honor to his name. And so when we do other things, other than be here for the purpose of worshiping God, are we bringing honor to God or dishonor? The Hebrew word for glory has a meaning of weight to it. You know, when we worship, we're giving him the weight of our lives. This is I come here this morning, Lord. I come into your prison. And I got this heavy burden. And I need somewhere to put it. I carried it all week long. But I'm through it. I need some help. I can't continue this on myself. You know, many things are important to us. Our family. Our possessions, our jobs, our cars, whatever. That God wants us to put more weight in our relationship to Him. And the word glory, when you 
that that word glory, what does it mean to you? It carries the meaning of giving God some kind of a splendor or holiness or think about it. That word glory. Giving glory to God. We should imagine the Lord in heaven and with all the splendor of that place. And his name is Lord. Yahweh. The name emphasizes that he is our personal covenant keeping God. We worship a personal God who wants to have a personal relationship with us. And we bring an offering to God. The word offering carries with it the idea of bringing a donation or a gift or a present to our meeting with the Lord. When we come to worship, we're supposed to bring our monetary offering to Him, our money offering to Him, a gift of a portion of what He has allowed us to have during the week or the month, an offering that gives glory to His name. And so many times we have seen in this church alone when we used to take up an offering here, the rattling of change. And I know for a fact, one night we stood in here, we had 47 people. And when we got done, they went back and counted what we collected. It was $7.18 from 47 people in our church. Wonder why churches are in the condition they're in in America? People not giving God an offering that pleases Him. When we come into the presence of a person, we see that person. How is it when we come into the presence of God, we don't see God? Maybe you haven't come into His presence in, if you don't see God and the beauty of His holiness. The Bible says we can't see God face to face, but it means we can't get into the presence of God in our physical bodies. But what about in our spiritual? How do we get in God's presence? You say I'm a child of God and you say I'm born again, but have you gotten in God's presence? How can you get in God's presence if you deny what He has to say to us? Our lives need to be marked by our closeness to God. Is He your loving God, your loving Father? Why don't you have a relationship with this loving God and loving Father then? We have to confess our sin to Him and ask Him to fill us with the presence of His Holy Spirit. And when we are filled with His Holy Spirit, we can listen to God talk with us. Hmm. While we're sitting in our pews, by His servants, His preachers, by His Word, and by our prayers. Then we find we're really worshiping God. We need to bring fear with us. Fear in the meaning of respect. And we study the Bible, it enhances our worship of the Lord. The word fear also carries the meaning of hope, tremble, trust, wait, carefully, rest, shake, twist, whirl. In fear we shake, twist, whirl, our amazement of His glory. There's also the idea of trembling in His presence. We wait carefully for Him. God is working in His time and in His way for our good. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Practice the beauty of His holiness. The word beauty carries with it the idea of adornment or decoration. When the Lord allowed Moses to see the back end of His glory, Moses' face glowed for many days afterwards. When we leave this church, Today, there should be something about you that says, I've been in God's presence. I've been with the Lord. When we get in His presence in our worship, 
Our faces will glow because of His presence. We show the beauty of His holiness in our faces. And it causes other people when they see us to be afraid and stand in awe of God's glory. So when you leave here, if all you get is scorn and such against you when they see your face, have you really been in the presence of God? You may have come to church, but have you been in the presence of God? As the song of Marie was singing, they was in the sanctuary listening to the Word of God, but they wasn't being changed because all they had on their mind was the things of the world. They were earth dwellers. Our lives should be full of worship and it will affect people that are around us in a real and positive way. When people see God in us, then they're going to want to know more about the God that we worship. If all they see is a hypocrite, you haven't been in front of God. You've been in church. The most acceptable service we can do to show God that He is praised by us because He has changed our lives. When we show the world how He has changed our lives, then God is pleased with our works. One of the greatest evidence that we can look at for the existence of God is His beauty. You know, have you ever seen, we went to these uh, flower gardens down in um, Florida one time, Birch's Gardens, or I forget the name of it, down in Florida. And it was really, really, really beautiful. When we went up to Niagara Falls, they had all these beautiful flowers and stuff. And we took uh, Grace up there to Niagara Falls. And we walked between all these beautiful flowers and, and uh, all that stuff, you know. And we looked at that. And how could you not know that there's a God in heaven? After seeing all that beauty, how could you? It just reminded me that God was looking at me. When I see that stuff. If you go to the zoo and you look at the color of the animals, look at the richness of their fur and the patterns that they have on them. You look through a window at night and you look out there and you see the stars. How many stars are there? Have you ever tried to count them? But you look out there, where did all these come from? You know? Maybe our scientists would have us think, well, there was a delivery truck running through the heavens and it had a wreck. And it spilled that stuff out and it ran down on the earth. And that's how come we got all these beautiful things here on the earth is because that truck up there in the heavens turned over. I mean, if they're going to tell you you evolved from the slime out of the ocean or a rock or something, I mean, you believe anything. But why don't they just tell you the truth that there is a God? There's a God that we're going to have to stand in front of one day. <clears throat> the beauty in this of the cosmos is God's signature. Paul writes, the heavens declare, there it is, you can't hide it. So even his eternal power and Godhead, he says, you're without excuse. You look around, you see what God has done, what he's made, you see his beauty. And what are you doing about it? He is a God of beauty. And we have to worship him in the beauty of holiness. So you think now, did I come to church just to come to church? Or did I come to church to worship God? You know, there's a reason people come to church. There's a reason they don't come to church. And you may be one of the reasons people don't come to church that you know. Because they don't see God in you. They see something else. Maybe they see the devil in you. 
If that's what it means to be a Christian, I don't have nothing to do with you, God, and I definitely don't want nothing to do with you. If that's what it takes to be a Christian, I don't want to be one. Think about it. What kind of an example are you setting to people out there when they see you? Do they see the Lord? Do they see your sacrifice to God? I don't want to give God His share. Or are you, oh, well, I'm there at the church and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Well, you can do whatever you want to do. But you can get one thing. God is going to judge you for what you do. And you think you're going to get by. Well, that's your idea of getting by. Go ahead. But now it's time for us to close this morning. You have to think about what you've been doing. Did you come here to worship God in His holiness? Or did you just come for church? Are you just an earth dweller? Or are you really real with God? All the praying you do, maybe your prayer is not even reaching the ceiling. Maybe you think you're saved and you're on your way to heaven. What would it be if you were wrong? And you're not saved and you're not on your way to heaven. What's going to happen to you then? You know, we need to examine ourselves. We need to make sure we're, we're doing the right thing that God wants us to be doing. Because you know what? The beast is coming. Is he coming for you? Look at all your kinfolk that's already left the church. He's come for them and took them. He's got a hold of them. And many of them out there talking about praying and doing all sorts of things. <laughs> They're getting in Facebook and talking about how God's done this in their life and God's done that. And they wouldn't give God the time of day. <laughs> you know what? The devils believe in tremble as well. They ain't alone. They got all your kid folks with them. <laughs> they're all trembling when they're afraid of God. But what are they doing about it? Trembling, they're afraid of God. Because they know that judgment's coming. And they just want to continue to do it their way. I don't have a problem with it. You can go to hell if that's what you want. And I'd hate to look down from heaven and see you in hell burning, knowing that I've preached my guts out time and time and time again to get you to repent and do the right thing, and you wouldn't do it. You got what you deserved then. That's how God's going to wipe away my tears. He's going to let me know you got what you wanted. You wanted it your way, and now you're going to have it your way. And it's too bad that hell may be your way. Well, think about where you're at. Maybe you need to do something about where you're at, or where you're going, or what you've been doing. If people don't see God in you, how is it you've been here to worship God this morning? If they don't see God in you when you leave here, like they seen God in Moses, when he came off of the mountain with his shining face, how is it that you've been in front of God? If all they see is that hypocrite they've seen that left for church, returned from church, how is it they see God in you? Think about it. Maurice going to give us a song of invitation now. You want to come to the altar and talk with God? I encourage you. I can't help you. I can't save you. There's nothing I can do for you. But I know a man who can. And if you'll come here and you'll talk to him, he can. He can change your heart. I've seen him change the king's heart. I've seen him hold the king's heart in his head and turn it. I'm here as living proof that he changed the king's heart. Let's have an altar call now. Thank you.